Hey guys, Matt here again for youdesily.com. What I'm going to show you in this video is how you can create the Slider Pro from scratch without having to clone any of the sample widgets. However, I do recommend you go ahead and clone the sample to get started and copy and paste and then customize from there as it is far more efficient and quicker to get you started with inside of your project. What we're going to do is show you how you can create something similar to this from scratch using the custom attributes and script that you Desly provide. There's a number of use cases to this professional slider. One of them being is it works tremendously well with keyboard and mouse and you can customize every single bit of the element to match your brand. In addition to this, you also have the ability to pause the slider on certain slides, giving people a lot more opportunity to read what content you have on there or view any of the images for a lot longer if they wish. So what you want to do is you want to jump over to your project. As you can see, I have a slider created here, which has two slides with just images on and I've got my content underneath. This is a project that I have cloned from the Webflow template store. However, you can go ahead and use any of the templates that are on there or you can go ahead and use your already existing project. What we need to do first is we need to put this inside of a wrapper. So as you can see, I've got it inside of a wrapper here. And we need to apply a custom attribute of udesly hyphen slider hyphen pro equals true. So go ahead and go to that, go to settings and apply an attribute. Paste that in there and then type in the value of true. We don't need to give any attributes to our Webflow slider, our native one that we have here. But what we need to do is we need to hide the left, right and navigation elements. So what we have to do is just go to your CSS and display none on all three of these elements here. Making sure that the slider navigation is set to numbered labels as well with obviously infinite repeat of slides. And then simply hide that there like so. First off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a div inside of my wrapper and I want this to be the loader. So I'm just going to type in progress in as a class, give it a height of five pixels. And then I want that to be minus five just so it's over the top of there like so. And I'm just going to give this a value of 99 so it's in front of everything. And I want this color to be the color of my brand. So I'm going to put, make it brown. And then what we need to do is we need to apply the attribute. So as you can see with the documentation, all of our elements for our slider is listed in the documentation. And it is simply an attribute of slider with the element name. So if we scroll down here and find the one for our progress bar, you can see the progress bar is simply slider equals progress. So we're going to copy one of them. Make sure I'm selected on my progress bar and go to the custom attributes, type in slider equals and then paste in our progress. So there you go, that's our progress bar done. And then we can go ahead and create all of the custom elements like so. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly do that now and I'll show you how you can apply the attributes to each one. As you can see here, I've created my slider with our previous. Next button, play pause our counter with three individual text blocks inside it one for the current slide one for the separator and one for our total slide count and we also have our indicator down here for the indicator what you need to do is you need to create your indicator div block and you need to create a combo class of active like so simply paste that on there and then you need to go ahead and change this style and then simply remove that combo class like so and then and then just leave it inside of Webflow like that. What this will do is the script will use that combo class for the active slide to change the style of your active indicator. So now we get on to the interesting bit of adding all of the custom attributes to our elements. So for our indicator, it, we need to copy this attribute here Go on to that indicator there and go to the custom attribute, type in slider and paste in indicator. For our previous button, it is slider. And again, you could paste in the attribute, but it is previous hyphen slide like so. 
For the next button, it is exactly the same. It is slider equals next slide. For our play button, it is slider equals play. And our pause button is slider equal pause. And for our slider navigation, we have got to apply the attribute for the current and the total count. So for our current, for our total slides number, it is slider equals slides number. So go onto that, click on the total, add an attribute of slider and paste in the attribute there like so. If we go to the documentation and copy the current slide number, go into our workflow project and go onto our text block there and add an attribute of slider equals current slide number and paste that inside of there. And of course we've already applied the attribute for our progress bar there. So now what we need to do is we need to add our script into our page. Simply go over to the documentation and copy this script here. Go to our workflow project, go to our page settings, scroll all the way down and paste it inside of the body area there. Save that, hit publish. As you can see, we've got our slider here, which pauses when our mouse is inside of the area. And if I move my mouse outside, you can see the pause button comes about and our slide resumes and that we've got our custom counter in the bottom right, as well as our next and previous buttons there as well, with the option to pause our slider as well like that. We also have our indicators there, which we can click into. Of course, I do recommend you choose to turn off the numbers inside of the slider settings. If you go back into Webflow and click on your slider and go into the settings at the top, you can turn the number labels off there. Another pro tip I recommend you having is go over to any of your elements that you've created that are clickable, scroll down onto the style and just change the cursor to the pointer there, like so, just to indicate to the user that these options are clickable. And as you can see, we now have our pointer visible on all of our elements. If you want to customize whether the pause on hover is enabled and keyboard is enabled, for example, what you need to do is go to the documentation and copy this script here. Go to your page on Webflow and edit the page settings. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and paste just before the script. And here you can change this to false, so pause and hover is on false. And turn keyboard control off by going to false on that one as well. Hit save. And if we publish this page like so, you can see before we have keyboard control or left and right and we also have the slide that pauses when our mouse is inside of the viewport and if we simply refresh this page you can see that we can play it but our mouse no longer pauses the slider once it's inside and we cannot go left and right with our keyboard so there you go that is how you can create a nice custom bespoke slider that matches your brand inside of Webflow using the Slider Pro widget that Udesly offers. Now remember we do have a multiple variants of this that you can go ahead and clone including a smaller version and some other custom elements on top and as all of the elements are independent inside of Webflow you can go ahead and customize this to your heart's content so you can have a progress bar that covers the whole screen if you so wish. If you need any help or support, we do have our help center and we'll happily help with any of your technical support questions that you may or may not have with any of our products. And of course, we do have our Facebook community group where I am extremely active on there and I do try my best to reply to as many of you as possible to help with any of your questions or just give general design inspiration, tips and tricks, etc. Anyway, my name has been Matt, I hope you got all the best from this video tutorial and I will catch you guys in the next video.